What's up, y'all? It is Justin Graves again. I hope by now you have uh, been enjoying these videos. If you haven't seen the others, be sure to check out our YouTube page. We've got some more posted there. These are just kind of some of uh, my thoughts on some of the worship songs that we're singing in our churches today, just my two cents. Uh, and I hope that it encourages and helps you as you lead worship or as you plan your worship services through the week. Um, these are This isn't just for worship leaders. These are just kind of some uh, ideas that I have, some thoughts on some of the songs. So be sure to share them with your friends. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to comment below and let me know what you think about all this. Um, today, though, we are discussing the song Cornerstone uh, by Hillsong. Um, this is a great song. They've taken an old text, an old hymn, and kind of modernized the, uh, the, the melody Kept the, kept the words, modernized the melody, and added this cool little chorus there in the middle, um, which I love. I love doing that, uh, and, and I want to encourage you to do that as well. Find some of those old hymns. Um, I grew up singing hymns, and so I love to take those old texts and just kind of uh, refresh them a little bit. Um, you don't have to do it like Hillsong does it. You can just sing the hymns like they are, uh, but it's always nice to just kind of give a facelift, maybe modernize some of the uh, language because some of those old songs use some funny language. You can update it so that it feels more modern and you don't have to be confused about what you're singing. Because sometimes even when we sing modern worship songs, um, some of the language that is used could be a little confusing or even uh, misunderstood sometimes. So I want to encourage you as you lead worship, don't just get up and sing songs. Don't just get up there, sing your four songs, and run off the stage. Take time. This is a time to encourage the congregation that you're in front of, to encourage the people that you're with, whether it's in the living room with three people or you're uh, on stage in front of thousands of people. Either way, it is, uh, it is our job as worship leaders to teach about the songs that we're singing. Um, and so I want to encourage you to do that. This is a great song uh, that, that can be used in multiple areas of a service. Great for communion, if you do a time of communion in your service. Great for an invitation time, if you have a reflection time after the message or, or invite people to, to pray and reflect on the message. But here, here's some of my thoughts on the way that Hillsong does this. When you hear Hillsong's version, um, they do kind of that flip-floppy octave thing, um, which they seem to really enjoy singing part of the song in kind of that lower register, and then halfway through the song, skyrocketing it up to that uh, octave higher upper register, which um, I have explained before can be a little strange and a little awkward because either it's too low for most people, it's really right out here, or it's, and then when it jumps up, it's too high for the other people. And so what I want to encourage you to do is find a key that uh, can accommodate um, the verse and the chorus being sung in the same register or the same octave. Now what I've done um, is I have taken this song and put it in the key of E by using one of my favorite tools, uh, the foot capo. Um, it's also called the cut capo. Uh, I've talked about this a little bit before, but it's a great tool to have in your guitar case to give you kind of that open guitar sound. It changes up some of the chords that you play. You put it on the second fret, play in the shape of D and it sounds like you're playing in drop D but you're really in the key of E and you don't have to retune anything. It's a great, great tool. Check out the foot capo. But what I've done is I've put this song in the key of E so that it accommodates being sung in the same register. Now again, your church is probably not Hillsong. And that's okay. That's a good thing because Hillsong is Hillsong and your church is your church. And what I want to encourage you to do is make this song your own. You don't have to do it just like they do it. I want to encourage you maybe to leave out the instrumental breaks unless there's a purpose for it. So again, to go back, uh, the, my, two, my two cents, two things on this song. Singing the old hymns in a fresh new way, awesome. Do that. That's, that is a great way to... Um, engage the the older, maybe the seasoned citizens of your congregation, as well as engage the the y younger people in your congregation. And also taking this song and putting it in a key where it's where you don't have to flip flop the uh, the octaves uh, makes it a little bit more singable. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. 
take songs, make them singable, because that's what we want to do as worship leaders is engage our congregation and provide an opportunity for them uh, to, to worship through song because they're not there to just watch us. That's not what our job is. We're not there to entertain people. We are there to lead worship. And so God has put us in this, in this position so that we can provide an opportunity for the people in our church, our living room, wherever around the campfire to worship God through song. So those are, those are for you, a few of my thoughts. Um, thanks for hanging out with me again today. Please share this with your friends. Like I said, check out our, our other YouTube videos on our, our uh, YouTube channel. So uh, check back again soon. We'll be posting a lot more of these, and we'll uh, see you soon. Thanks. I hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy truth. In Jesus' name, Christ on cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of. Savior's love through the storm.